Hey guys, welcome back to the Invader PC showroom. Today is a new day and with a new day, we have a new GPU. That's right folks, a new GPU in the year 2022. So today with us, we have the Radeon RX 6500 XT from both ASUS and AMD. Now this card is supposedly starting at USD 199. So is it worth the hype, especially with how it is? Find out as we dive deeper into the performance metrics of the Radeon RX 6500 XT, especially compared to its older brother, the RX 6600. The Radeon RX 6500 XT is AMD's latest and greatest offering to its budget-friendly and entry-level class level of GPUs. Now, this latest Navi24 GPU utilizes the latest RDNA2 architecture and is actually using a new 6 nanometer production process by TSMC. Now, hosting supposedly the highest sustained game boost clock at 2.6 gigahertz, 16 compute units, 16 Ray accelerators and 16 megabytes of Infinity Cache memory, all the while hosting a wide array of AMD Adrenaline software to boost your gameplay experience. Things like Fidelity FX Super Resolution or FXR for short. Now, is this GPU all it's said to is supposed to be? And how does this actually translate to the real world? Well, to test this, we'll be taking a look at this GPU against its older brother the Radeon RX 6600 and to do that we will be using this system right here. Now for testing we'll be testing them against three different kinds of games to see how they perform in different kinds of games and different kinds of scenarios. But I think that's enough about the testing methodology. Why don't we take a closer look at what's inside and let's get started. So first time in our testing, we ran both cards using Horizon Zero Dawn as we wanted to have a rough idea on how the Radeon RX 6500 XT would perform in a AAA title scenario. So when we compare both the results, you can see here that the 6600 actually does get um, a stable frame rate above 60. So we're looking more around the range of 75 to 80 FPS on average. Whilst if you look at the 6500 XT, Unfortunately, it doesn't really hit the 60 mark. It kind of fluctuates more around the range between the 52 to maybe 60 FPS range. So depending on what you're doing and how demanding the game is, you may actually see some dips here and there. However, when we ran our next test on Valorant, you will be happy to know that when it came to Valorant itself, the performance of both the 6500 XT and the 6600 XT were actually good. So when we were looking at the 6500 XT, we were looking on more the range of 390 to probably 400 FPS on average. Whereas when we look at the 6600 XT, we can see that we are looking around the range of 440. So in this game itself, when it comes to esports titles, the 6500 XT is actually a pretty good card. So if your main focus is looking more towards esports titles, I believe the Radeon RX 6500 XT would be a solid fit for you. And moving on to our last test, we ran Monster Hunter Rise. It was a new game as this time of launch. And we, in terms of numbers, the 6500 XT actually does manage to pull off a frame rate of about 90 to 100 FPS on average, especially on high settings. Whilst if you look at the 6600, we are looking more around the range of 140 to 150. So depending on what kind of monitor you're using, the 6500 XT can actually meet demand. Whilst, and we actually tried using FSR as well on Horizon Zero Dawn. And from here, we can see results are actually quite good actually. So we ran FSR on both performance and balance. And in terms of performance, we are looking at about... Uh, let's see... Honestly, about a 20% or 20 FPS uplift. So we are looking at about a 40% uplift in terms of FPS. However, do note that when it came to image quality, 
Horizon Zero Dawn did not show as good of a promise as compared to native. So that is one of the things that you need to consider as well. Because as much as FSR does give you a performance increase when it comes to frames, hope image quality may do may suffer a bit, especially depending on the game's implementation. But considering FSR is still new, I would say you're probably gonna be gaining more than anything. And that's a wrap folks. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was really fun for us to make. A huge shout out to both AMD and ASUS for providing us the graphic card and drivers prior to the launch so we could do benchmarking on the graphic card before the launch date itself. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button down below if you want to see more content just like this or if you just want to see our previous videos. You know, that helps us quite a ton. And let us know in the comment section down below on what you guys want to see next and how you guys felt about the whole benchmarking sequence itself. Do you think we could have done things differently, better? Let us know in the comment section down below. And last but not least, don't forget to follow our social media as we will be announcing a few exciting news along the way in the near future. Wow. If you want, before you go, if you want to see what we did in our previous videos, we did do a B660 motherboard unboxing. Or you could try and see how we tried to break the track with Power Pro. And that's it for me, folks. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.